Welcome to Concepts of Programming Languages. I'd like to talk to you today about some of our parameter passing mechanisms. We'll have two videos on this because it's a lot of things. So what we're going to cover in this video are pass by value, which is the mechanism that I expect you to be somewhat familiar with already. Most people have used this. Pass by result, which I don't expect any of you to have seen before, but is fairly straightforward. Pass by value result, which is actually a combination of the previous two. And then pass by reference, which is the other most common method that I expect many of you will have had um, some experience with. In the next video, we're going to look first at macro expansion, which isn't really a parameter passing mechanism, but is relevant and is useful in understanding pass by name, which is an important method that's a little more obscure and hard to understand. And then pass by need, which is also related. So we'll focus on those in the next video. Let's talk a little bit about pass by value just to make sure that we're all very comfortable with it. This is also sometimes referred to as copy in. It is certainly in many ways the simplest of the various parameter passing techniques and probably is the most common mechanism. We're just going to copy the value of the parameter from the function activation record where it is now to the function activation record for the subprogram that we're calling. Lots of languages do pass by value. Many, many of them have it as an option, usually the default, so that you have to do something if you have other options to get one of those other options. It is the only option at all in C or Java. Some of you may be sitting here going, but, but, but Java passes by reference, because I've certainly seen claims that Java passes by reference in various places. If you believe that Java passes by reference, I have a whole video on that, so I'd encourage you to check it out. There are some real advantages to pass by value, which might help explain why it's so common. It's considered very safe because we're making a copy. We can't change whatever the actual value was that was passed in. Though if we do pass a reference or a pointer, we can change what they point at. It's generally easy to understand and to implement, and we can pass values indirectly. There are, however, some disadvantages to pass by value. The biggest one is probably that it's inefficient for large values if we have things like objects, structs, tuples. Obviously, this is not a concern for Java, which always copies in either a primitive or a memory address, all of which are small. It is a concern for languages like C or C++, where we can pass in some quite large values. We also can't pass anything back to the caller. Some people will say that's actually not a disadvantage. But there are times when we do want to do it. There are ways, however, to get around it in many languages. If I have a parameter I want to change in a function, if I'm in something like C, I can actually create a pointer to the variable and pass the pointer. That used to actually be known as pass by address. So technically, it's just passing a pointer by value. In Java, or similar languages, we could just embed the item in an object, pass the object reference, and then get the value that was modified out of the object. It's a little complicated, but it can be done. Let's take a look at the next one called pass by result. This is also known as copy out. So it's basically the opposite. Instead of copying into the function we're calling, at the end of that function, we're gonna copy the value back to the caller. The argument must have a location to copy to. So with pass by value, of course, we can just pass in a number or a string, an actual value. We don't actually have to have a location that we're copying from because we're only copying from it. With pass by result, of course, we have to have a location to copy to because we're copying out, not in. There are actually very few pass by result languages. Um, the first of those was something called Algol W. It is also an option in some ADA implementations. There are a couple of issues that can come up with pass by result. The copying is always done after the function is complete, but results could be impacted by when the location to copy is determined. Let's take a look at this. I have a global counter variable and a function. So I've written this in a C-like syntax. 
and out is what I'm using to indicate that it's a pass by result. If we determine the location at call time, we're passing in array at counter. Counter is one at the point where we make the call. The five gets copied into air one, and so air holds one, five, three. On the other hand, if we don't determine the location until we actually do the copy, counter is going to be two. So we've set num to five, but this is a copy. This is over in the called function, not going back until we get to the end of fun one. And so at that point, counter is two. We copy the five into air two, and air at the question holds one, two, five. Another issue that can occur with pass by result is that results could be impacted by the order in which we copy things back to the caller. Consider this situation. If my copy is working from left to right, then the three will get copied into my num, followed by the four being copied into my num. So my num is four. On the other hand here, if the copy works from right to left, the four gets copied first, then we copy the three over into my num. So my num is actually three in that case. Very different results depending on that particular quirk of the implementation. I do want to comment quickly about the value of good programming because to create these problems, I actually violated some principles of it. The first example uses a global variable usually a bad idea because we're not in control of access to that variable. Notice that we could accomplish the same thing by having both reference and result parameters. Not likely to happen, but it could. The second example uses an alias where we're passing, you know, we passed two parameters the same location. Now that we have a little understanding of result, I want to talk about pass by value result which is also known as copy in, copy out. We're basically gonna do the value part and then do the result part. This allows values to be used, so they're passed in, and then modified and copied back out. This is also somewhat rare. Algol W also used it, and some ADA implementations used it. There are also some modern things that use it. Um, for example, some versions of SQL will use it, which makes sense because you don't want to make the changes if something goes wrong with a transaction. Note that with pass by value result, your location has to always be determined at call time. You have to copy out of it, out of that location into the function when the function is starting. So we don't have to worry about not figuring out what that is until the end. We're always going to copy back to the same place that we copied from. However, the order of copying back has the exact same impact as it does with pass by result. Pass by value result, like pass by value and quite frankly, pass by result can be very expensive again for large values. So you have some of those same concerns. However, it is cheaper than pass by reference, which we'll be talking about in a moment for small values because we don't have to follow a reference every time we access the parameter in the function. So with pass by reference, we have to make two checks of memory every time we want to access something that has been passed by reference. That's not the case here. We have the expense of the copy, but then that's the only expense until we do the other copy. Pass by reference, I expect, is likely familiar to many of you. The basic idea is that I'm going to take the memory address of the argument and store that in my function activation record instead of making a copy of the value. So the function activation record for these parameters, instead of containing a value for the parameter, which is the case for all of value result and value result, it stores a memory address. Then each time we want to use the parameter, automatically have it dereferenced for us. So we go to the memory address and on to the original location without the programmer having to do anything to make that happen. So from the programmer's point of view, it's no different. We're actually working with the original variable in its original location in every case. We just follow that reference to that original location. Like value result, of course, this allows values to be used and to be modified. Quite a few languages use pass by reference. This is the second most common approach. 
it was first implemented in Fortran. This is how parameters were passed in that very early language. It's also available in C++, C Sharp, PHP, Pascal, some Ada implementations, and other languages. One of the nice things about pass by reference is that it does avoid the cost of copying large values. So this is one of the reasons why it's very popular. If you've worked in C++, you may have often been encouraged to pass things like objects by constant reference. And the reason is that copying the whole thing is expensive. It does require an implicit dereference every time a parameter is used. So there is some cost to that, which can overcome the value of not copying if we're using a small value a lot. It also does create an alias. So we have two names for the same thing, which sometimes does cause us issues. Note that anytime we copy a reference or a pointer, when you assign one, we have two variables that point at the same thing. We're going to have similar potential for problems. So this is always something we have to be careful about when we're dealing with references and pointers. I'm going to finish up this video by looking at a couple of examples with reference and value result because it can be really confusing to sometimes understand the differences and I want you to kind of see some behaviors in interesting places. So this first example I've got by reference and I'm going to have a simple function that takes a couple of integers by reference doubles one of them and subtracts one from the other. And so we're going to create one value for and pass it to both of those, which we would expect to cause some problems. So let's uh, compile that real quick. and run it, and we're going to see that what happens here is num1 is going to get passed in, so num2 and num3 are both pointing at this num1, which is 4. We double it, so num1 is now 8. Both of them are 8, and num3 is pointing at the same thing. We subtract 1. So both of them are seven. And when it's all done, the answer is seven. And that becomes pretty clear as long as we remember that these are both just pointing to that same num1 back there. So then I've set up another example, which is sort of va faking value result. So I don't have a convenient language here. Um, we can easily pretend to do value result by passing in the, a couple of things by reference and then copy them and copy them back out. So we're going to see what happens if we sort of pretend we're doing value result. So this is the same exact code except that we're doing this copy in copy out piece. And so here Remember, we're making copies. So num4 and num5 are both pointing at the same thing. But we've copied that to num2 and to num3, each individually. So then when we double num2, we have only doubled num2. So it is now 8, but num3 is now 4. And then when we subtract 1 from num3, we haven't changed the value of num2 only the value of num3. And then when we copy them back out, we are working left to right. Obviously, we could change that and do the right to left and end up with 8 instead of 3. So here's another example of reference parameter passing. So I again, violated some principles of good programming, setting up a global variable. I'm going to give that global a value and then pass it in as a reference parameter. 
We're going to see how that behaves, remembering that num2 is always pointing at num1. So let's compile that and run it. And we see that both of these have been doubled because they're both pointing at the same thing. And then we decrement and it's affecting both of them. And then we end up, of course, with the nine as the final value in func in main after func one is complete. If we do the same logic with our value result option, get a little bit different result. So we take our global, we set it to five, we send it in, and of course it gets copied to the num2 because we're faking our value result copy in. And then we double num1. Well, that hasn't changed num2 because num2 is a copy of what num was before that change, not a reference to it. Then we subtract one from num2. And that does not affect num1. Then we copy back out and we end up with num1 is four. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful in your understanding of some of the parameter passing mechanisms that we have. I hope to see you next time when I'll be talking about some of the more interesting uh, parameter passing mechanisms that get used.